Hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Today's video is about deformable parts in assemblies. There are lots of assemblies that when you create them, there are spaces that require uh, components that can move and um, components that can conform to the assembly. So for example, we have this very simple assembly here. <laughs> And just imagine that there's something in between this green piston and this pedestal that deforms as you move it. And let's say that same piece of geometry is over on this side as well. But when the assembly is moving, these pieces need to expand and contract. So what we need is a component that can deform based on where you put it it would be the same component, but it's in a different shape, like a spring or like an O-ring or like um, a piece of molding. So what you do is you create a deformable part. So, for example, <clears throat> if the space in between here is roughly an inch and the space in between here is roughly three inches, and I have a section of tubing, let's say, that I'm putting in there, so some stretchable <clears throat> tubing, I want it to be able to uh, compress. So... I'm going to start a uh, part file called tube and I'm going to um, get into my beloved uh, expressions editor and say H and I'm going to set H equal to one. Terrific. H equals one. Then I'm going to go into the sketcher and I'm on an arbitrary plane. I'm going to sketch a racetrack. Um, a lot of you may not know this, but if you can go into the uh, reuse library, there's a thing called the 2D section library. Um, this is an inch part, and I'm going to use a slot. Uh, what's going on? Okay, I'm going to put it right there and say, okay. I'm just going to uh, put some rules on it. We need collinearity here. I want to center it. There you go. So that's the 2D section library. As you can see, there's a bunch of things that are pretty useful. Um, okay, so now I've got my slot. I don't want these dimensions. I'm going to just delete that. I'm going to delete that. Because I want to uh, dimension the top of this slot with the H dimension that I created. There we go. Now, uh, this H, uh, I started it off at a certain numerical value. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to fix the um, circumferential length of this profile with a, if I go to menu, insert, dimension, there's a perimeter dimension. And the way the perimeter dimension works is you select a bunch of entities. Okay. And then you give it a numerical value. In this case, um, I want um, 10. And say OK. So now, this, the addition of the uh, circumference or the, um, the uh, curve lengths of all these entities is going to remain 10 no matter what. And so just to show you, to prove it, if I should make this thing taller now, if I should make H taller, then, this, that, then these um, arcs have to come inward, right? So I'm going to go to the uh, part navigator. I'm going to find the user expressions. And right here, I'm going to put in three. And you can see it comes in, and it's a lot higher. If I put two there, okay? And if I put four there, it will break because it's going to just violate the the uh, constraints, if you will. So put it back to one like that. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to make a solid out of it. And I'm just going to extrude these um, from, I'm going to extrude them symmetrically uh, with an inch. And I'm going to do an offset, a two-sided offset. And I'm going to give this thing a wall thickness, so to speak. Um, say OK. And finally, I'm just going to do a little bit of blending at uh, point, uh, point 0 0.0625. Uh, 
Ascending to G1, Curvature Continuity Blend. And I'm going to select all these edges and these edges and these edges and these edges. And say OK. Control J. So let, now I've got this little piece of tubing, which is that color. Great. So now the fun begins. Now that I have the actual model, and as you can see, I can you know, change it uh, to make it do what, what I want. I'm going to uh, make it a deformable model. So in order to do that, you say tools and parts and features and define deformable part. Define deformable part. This is a wizard. So it asks you for the name. I'm just going to hit next. Um, it asks you for the entities which you want as part of the deformable model. And I want them all. So I selected them and moved them into this uh, nice little column with this little arrow and say next. And then what I really care about in terms of my inputs are H. And I'm going to push that in H. Now H, um, after the height of three, it, it destroys itself. And so I'm going to say... Well, I'm just going to say H for now. Um, you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to hit next. And then I'm going to um, select these references. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of them. I don't want any references. So I'm going to say uh, remove geometry, remove geometry. So there's no references. This part just comes in and I can use it. And I'm going to say next. And I'm going to say finish. Beautiful. So now this is a piece of geometry that I can use and place inside of my uh, assembly and it will deform and I can deform it at any time. So um, this part again is called uh, two and I can go to the deformable assembly now and I'm going to bring that two bin. Now the distance between here and here is about one. Um, and I'm just going to bring this thing in. And I'm going to say assemblies, add component. I'm going to put in the uh, tube. And I'm going to immediately do a touch constraints. And I'm going to say that this face, bottom face, touches this face here. And I'm going to just grab it, move it over like this. And uh, maybe I'll do a center command. Uh, center, I'm going to do a center one to two. So the uh, center datum plane of this part will be centered about here and there and i'll call it good and then right after that it says oh what's the uh what's the height that you want and i'm going to put in a one and then as you can see it squishes down okay so good so now i'm going to uh put the a uh, mating condition on here um, I call it a mating condition, but it's an assembly constraint. Old habits are hard to die. I'm going to say touch, and I'm going to touch this face with that face there. And say OK. OK, now if you've got a deformable part and you want to deform it more, you can double click on it and say deform. And I'm going to put this now at 2 and say OK. So there's a deformable part at two. And now I'm going to do it one more time at three. Three. And say OK. OK, so now I want to put another copy right in here. But when I put this copy in here, it's got to deform to this distance, the distance that's left. And so now I'm going to do something very tricky. I'm going to go to the um, Analysis tab, Analysis measure and i'm going to measure a distance between those two faces but i'm going to measure it associatively to make an actual expression for that distance so if i select this face and then that face and i say okay uh what i get is an expression in the assembly that shows me that distance and that distance happens to be uh which one is it there's a length there's a length um it's labeled let's see here we go measure and uh i believe it's this one p36 it says length number measure let's just 
push that out. It's the measure distance 10. Okay, so let's just call this BIST in the expressions. And remember, this is the expressions. These are the expressions that are inside the uh, assembly. And if I should deform this tube again, let's call it um, 1.5, 1.5 and say, okay. And now if we go to control E and let's make sure that the distance has changed. And here my distance measurement is now 2.5. Great. Say, okay. So now the tricky thing is <clears throat> I'm going to bring in another um, copy of this tube. Only when I bring the copy of the tube in, I'm going to deform it. And I'm going to deform it based on the DIST variable that I made. And so uh, here we go. I'm going to say um, assemblies. This time I'm going to use the assemble command. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you something different. And uh, I'm clicking on the tube. And with the assemble command, it basically assumes um, the constraints that you might want. So I'm going to just select that face and select that face. And so it's assumed to touch. That's nice. Um, I need to do the center, but you could see the datum plane's not showing. Um, so I'm just going to say, okay, here, I'm going to, uh, go to the, um, uh, the, uh, part navigator and I'm going to unpack the tubes and I'm going to say, uh, replace reference set the entire part. So now I can see that datum plane. I'm going to do now a center, uh, a centering, um, whoops, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do a, where is it? Center. And I'm going to do a one to two. And this one datum plane is going to be centered about these two faces here. Like that. And I'm just going to drag this in just to save some time here. Whoops. What is that? I'm going to <laughs> do the move component. This component's got to move this way. Over here. Um... Say so, okay. And now I'm going to deform it. Here's the tube. I'm going to say deform. Deform. There it is. Deform. And this time I'm going to go into the, uh, I'm going to go into edit. I'm going to go to this little down arrow and I'm going to do formula, formula. And the, defor the deformation I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make this equal to DIST. I S T. Say okay. Say okay. There we go. Say okay. Finally. So now I have this assembly. As you can see, it's tube and tube. It's the same part, but it has different uh, incarnations, if you will, and um, everything is driven by. Um, this tube de deformation. So if I so if I go in and I deform this one, let's call it um, let's call it 0.75, Then oh, 0.75 crushes a little more than this one can handle. So let's not make it 0.75. Let's make it like one. And that won't violate it. There you go. So see, so they'll continue touching the whole time. Let's just do one more. Uh, it's four minus three, just like that. And now that happens. So that is the power of a deformable part and a, um, interpart expression, um, that, uh, works with the deformable part. You don't have to have an interpart expression. Maybe you just have an assembly that has different known spacings for some spring or, or something of that, uh, of that nature. And uh, there you have it. Uh, the deformable part gives you a power that is amazing. Um, it's really, really good for situations where you're using the same part, but it takes on different incarnations. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Please like and subscribe if you can. The Design Visionaries YouTube channel is something that we continually kind of update and enjoy um, sharing with. And uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, your patients watching these things and of course your feedback please feedback and share with your friends thank you